Hi everyone and welcome to uh, another bonus tutorial around SimPy. Um, so in the last tutorial we looked at um, uh, ex extending our uh, SimPy model by putting in prioritized queuing. Um, now another thing that you might want to put into your models, um, that particularly in healthcare systems um, where you've got various people on different shifts or people called away to do different things, um, is the idea of having your resources being unavailable at certain times. So if you're modeling an ED, you've got say, I don't know, four doctors, um, you're not always gonna have those four doctors. There'll be various shift patterns. They may be called off to other parts of the hospital, etc. cetera. Um, and so we can emulate that in uh, SimPy fairly easily um, by essentially um, obstructing that resource for um, a certain amount of time. Uh, so we can basically, in the same way that we uh, grab a resource when we're, um, we've got patients coming in and they're using that resource, we can grab it um, not as a patient, but just to say that resource is unavailable for a certain amount of time. So I'm going to show you a really easy way to, to do this. So again, we're going to use the same model um, that you'll be now very familiar with, the, the ED model where we've got patients coming in, being registered, triaged, and then they're either... Uh, being assessed in the ED or, or sent to the ACU for assessment. Um, what we're going to do this time, I'm just going to add in um, uh, some unavailability for the ED doctor. Um, so I'm going to say that the ED doctor is, uh, is uh, unavailable at certain periods. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is just in our in our global class, I'm going to add in a couple of attributes um, that specify uh, the lengths of time and the frequencies with which um, the ED doctor is going to be unavailable. Now it could be that these represent means and you may randomly sample um, uh, to get the exact times but if you're doing shift patterns it's probably going to be the case that you're looking at fixed times um, but you can do either. So here I'm going to assume fixed times so what I'm basically saying here is um, uh, I've created an attribute called uh, unavailable time ED doctor um, and unavailable frequency ED doctor. So um, what they're basically set, what we're going to set it up as, remember all, all this is in minutes in our model, um, so uh, basically every uh, eight hours um, the doctor, a, a, an, an ED doctor will be unavailable for four hours. Okay, so every eight hours um, we're going to hold an ED doctor so they can't do anything else for uh, four hours. Um, and that will emulate um, uh, a, a particular shift pattern, for example. So you could you could set this up however you like, but just for the purposes of testing, that's that's how I'm going to do it. So we want it so that um, uh, every uh, eight hours we get four hours of uh, of one fewer doctor in the in the ED. So um, I've set up these these attributes. There's obviously, there's a little bit more to it um, than that. So the other thing I'm going to do um, is in our uh, model class now. Before, um, we had just one generator, uh, uh, entity generator, that was generating uh, patients arriving into our uh, emergency department. In the same way, I'm going to set up another entity generator, and this one I've called Obstruct ED Doctor. And this is basically a generator that's just going just gonna to start obstructing the ED Doctor at various intervals. Um, so uh, again, it's just part of the model class. I've just ca called this uh, this uh, generator function obstruct ED doctor, um, and again, I'm using putting all this in a while truth statement in the same way that we did for the um, patient generator because we wanted to keep doing this um, until the end of the simulation. It may be, of course, that depending on what you want to simulate, that you you may not want a, an infinite. Um, infinite loop here you you may have it only for a certain amount of time and then after that you don't want the resource obstructed however you want to sort of capture it um, so uh, ignore this print statement for a moment the first thing we, we we're going to do in this generator um, is to say so when the simulation starts we want to say right um, don't do anything don't start obstructing the doctor yet we want to model the period in which the doctor is available um, so we're going to freeze this obstruction um, uh, uh, generator function um, and we know by now that we can use um, uh, a timeout uh, in the environment, the model environment to do that. So I can yield self environment timeout 
um, and the length of time I'm going to time out for is the frequency which I specified up here as 480 minutes or 8 hours um, and again if you wanted to randomly sample from a distribution you could do that but I, I, I'm choosing a fixed uh, 8 hour period for this so what that will do is uh, when that generator starts at the start of the simulation um, it won't do anything essentially for for eight hours of simulated time it'll it'll just freeze in place but then once that time's elapsed um, then it's going to request an ed doctor now we want to make sure that this gets priority over everything else essentially this is the doctor's imagine it's the doctor's home time um, so uh, the way we do this we've already set up our ed doctor as a um, uh, uh, to, 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 as a priority resource to accept um, uh, priority based queuing um, and that's important if we're going to do this we, we have to make sure we've got a priority resource set up um, so what we can do as we did before with the priority resource stuff um, we can request the ED doctor um, and we can uh, put a, a priority on that request now before we set the priority as being whatever priority the, the patient had but here we're saying I want an ED doctor and I've set the priority to minus one. Now remember the um, the ED doctor or any resource will always um, take uh, uh, the thing in the queue that's got the lowest priority value. So uh, if we're not using um, negative numbers in the rest of our model uh, and I'd recommend that, that that would be the case. If we use a, a value of minus one here we'll know this will be the highest priority. So we're going to we, we're going to request an ED doctor with a priority of minus one highest priority. Um, now we're, we're going to um, freeze the function until that request can be met, because, of course, what we don't want to do uh, it, it likely be the case. That this would um, you would you normally wouldn't want to do this, um, but you, you, you're normally uh, in a case where you're modeling a system where you wouldn't have the doctor just suddenly disappear mid consultation they're not going to say well it's eight o'clock home time um and just walk out in the middle of speaking to the patient or you know the, uh, a surgeon doing that in the middle of an operation it wouldn't happen um well, I, hope, I hope it wouldn't happen um so uh by by freezing the function using the yield statement here we're saying um this this is going to be the next thing that, that that grabs the doctor um uh, here but finish what you're doing first and then as soon as that uh uh, a doctor has finished with uh, doing what they're doing with the patient um, then this function will then unfreeze and continue and at that point again ignore the print statement for a moment um, at that point we can uh, call another timeout uh, and this time we're essentially going to freeze the function with the doctor being held so that the doctor unavailable as we did for any of the other um, processes within our model so um, you know if we uh, got with the nurse here for example we we time out the function freeze the function essentially um, for the amount of time that we we sample representing the amount of time the patient is spending with the nurse the, the amount of time the nurse is unavailable for example so here we're doing the same thing um, but this time our, our unavailability is representing no patients can have you you're unavailable for this period of time uh, and again um, I'm using a fixed value here which represents the time until um, either this doctor's next shift or until there's uh, another doctor um, that comes on so um, obviously if you had you know two uh, ED doctors in this case um, available all the time so you wouldn't need to worry about this but if you had a period where um, every uh, eight hours you had four hours where uh, there was only one ED doctor then you could use this um, so it's going to grab an ED doctor and it's going to it's going to hold them uh, for a period of uh, four hours which we set up in the global class um, up here uh, so that's basically what we what we need to do the only uh, other thing we need to do is to start the generator running uh, so if you remember from the run method of the model class um, we started our um, ed arrivals generator in the same way we're going to start our obstruct ed doctor generator as well so we, we need to make sure we we start that um, or as i did when uh, i tested this a moment ago forgot to do that and wonder why it wasn't working so uh, but you'll soon you'll soon figure out i think what, what, what you've done wrong if that's the case so we start that up uh, i'm just going to go back to these print statements so what i'm going to do just to check um, this is working as it should i'm going to i've put in a little print statement um, so that uh, when uh, the, uh, the prints first um, 
the very first thing it will do when the generator launches um, is to say that an ED doctor will be removed around the time of whatever the time is now um, plus the uh, the frequency so plus eight hours now um, I say around the time here because of course that as I say they're not going to be ripped away from what they're doing so it should be close to that time so the very first doctor should be removed around um, the uh, the uh, was it eight hours we said yeah uh, around the eight hour uh, mark um, but it, it, there may be a slight difference there and then when we um, actually get that doctor uh, and make make them unavailable then we print another message saying that the ED doctors are now unavailable they'll be back at time and then whatever the time is now plus this unavailable period which we specified as, as 240 minutes so let's run it and see what happens so if I run that um, we can see here that um, the model is working so the, the the very first time this this comes uh, comes in it's uh, uh, starting from time zero so it's saying an ED doctor is going to be removed around time 480 which is our, our frequency um, and the next thing was when we actually then removed that ED doctor uh, so they're now unavailable they're going to be back at time uh, so now you'll get a very precise time here it's because it's whatever the precise simulation time was um, at the moment at which they became free and then essentially saw this entity, this obstruction entity, that then then um, holds them for the next uh, the next four hours. Um, so that's why you're getting very very precise times there. Um, so uh, we expected um, the doctor to be removed around 480 minutes, and then to be gone uh, for another 240 minutes from whenever it is uh, they went. So we'd expect it to be uh, if if they were available at time 480. Um, then obviously the time they'll be back it would be 720 so you can see that they they clearly um, spent another 2.83 minutes finishing off what they were doing before they before they left um, so they'll now be back at, um, at that particular time now of course you could add functionality if you want to get really detailed in your model to say well you know the doctor may have been uh, uh, stayed for another half an hour that doesn't mean they can come in half an hour late for their next shift so of course you know you can you can model that you can model these shifts however you want uh, uh, and of course these shifts may not uh, these periods of unavailability may not just represent shifts it might be that you're capturing certain periods in which you know the um the, you'll be a doctor down in the ed because you know 20 percent of the time uh, they're actually having to go off to do something else so you can again you can use it to model things like that as well but it's just a really easy way actually of um being able to model that that um that increased level of detail and as i say don't get hung up on individual doctors if you've got um, uh, a, a very complex shift pattern but it means that you've always got two doctors on in the ED then you don't need to worry about this you've you've got two resources um, essentially you, you've got to think about it in terms of the number of resources you've got um, and whether that changes over the course of the day uh, or night um, so you know overnight you may well have um, fewer resources and you can use this um, this kind of method in order to model model that so that combined with the priority um, resource uh, way of dealing with queues, hopefully you can see that th this is a really good way of being able to model these kind of real world systems where we're having to prioritize certain patients and where we know we're not always gonna have um, the, the same level of resource in our model. So have a play around with that in, in the models you developed. Um, try different ways of um, uh, modeling uh, the, the the unavailable time maybe um, uh, come up with your own logic for, for how that's going to work try putting in some real world shift patterns that you that you know about from your own experiences um, have a play around but you'll see actually fundamentally this is pretty easy um, all you've really got to do is set up that the, the core, core to this is setting up another generator function that essentially requests and keeps the resource that you want to remove uh, for a certain period of time um, and uh, that that's really the, the the core of what you need to do and in the way i've done it here um, i've specified those times and frequencies in our global class um, and the one thing don't forget of course uh, to start the process um, the uh, generator function uh, when you run your model so that's it for now again if you've got any questions uh, or uh, like to ask anything further about any of this um, please get in touch on slack otherwise We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.